Hello, everyone. Do you remember, if you're a long-time player like myself, Ancient Bonds, when Ancient Bonds came out, and they brought in some new artifacts, uh, Arcanist cards, and a bunch of golems, but no one cared about them. Um, do you remember Arcanist Fey back in the day? The most, uh, probably the most powerful deck that has existed in Duelist, if I had to guess, like in context of the environment it was in. Um... It was incredibly complicated, incredibly flexible, and incredibly hard to play. Um, and you had to get good at it, because you had to play... If you wanted to play tournaments, you were going to play Artifact Ar Arcanist Fame Mirrors. Um, there was one other top deck, which was Magma Midrange, um, you know, with Lava Slasher, um, and some little bit of Golem Synergy, but mostly it was just a midrange deck. Um, that was strong as well, but it was a much simpler to play. But if you're playing a multi-deck format, you would have a Magma deck, and you would have a Vanal deck, and you would have whatever else you could scrape together. Um, given that, you know, a lot of those Arcanists don't exist in Duelist 2, but you do draw two cards a turn, I thought I'd give it a go. Um, so this is Arcanist Vanar. Um, I have heard that Vanar is a bit maligned at the moment, um, and it seems to be with good reason. They don't have a big reload spell. Um, they don't have a ton of great long game plans that I've seen. You can do some cool stuff with walls, but I don't think it's, like, good, per se. And it's very punishable by AoE and things like Lightbender. Um, however, Vanar do have all their old removal back. Um, Chromatic Cold deals 2 damage, right? This card got nerfed to deal 1 damage at some point. Um, still got Hailstone Prison. That never got nerfed before, but it's really good in 2-draw because your opponent's hand is more full more of the time. Um, Aspect of the Fox is back at 1 mana to get nerfed to 2. Um... And then you also get to play, like, Spirit of the Wild costs 4 now, which is kind of interesting, so we're trying that out. Um, so basically, this deck is an attempt to marry a bunch of cheap cards, um, cheap spells, specifically, with Arcanists. Uh, and then a few support cards along the way. So our spell package is Flash Freeze. Um, this was always a really, really good card in Arcanist Fan Art back in the day. Um, especially with Blue Conjurer, which was a 4-6, so whenever you played a spell, you got an Arcanist into your, into your hand at random. Random Arcanist. So Blue Conjurer plus Flash Freeze was a, you know, a strong turn that was very mana efficient and you still got you a trigger even if the Blue Conjurer then died and got dispelled. Um, Polarity is a way to turn Owlbeast Sage boards into lethal. Um, Owlbeast Sage and Arcanist decks in general have this problem where they go super wide but you don't actually like do anything. Uh, Fanar managed to mix that up a little bit by, you know, if you've got a 418 Owlbeast Sage, you Polarity it, your opponent dies. Um, assuming you can get an next to them, which... But I also don't necessarily struggle with. Aspect of the Fox is a bit of an awkward card. I think it's it's better positioned now than it usually was in Old Duelist. Uh, you kind of play it as a necessary evil because like it um, it resets a big Albi Sage or something and it acts as a dispel. Um, so if they've got a minion that's bigger than 3-3, three, three, you're getting some value as well as dispelling it. Um, but it is still you're spending a card and they're keeping a 3-3, three, three, so it kind of gets a bit awkward. A little bit better in 2-draw. Um, I'm playing Prophet of the White Palm. This probably isn't correct. In my one test game, I found myself running out of cards a lot. So maybe this should be something more expensive. Um, but one, I really like this card. I think because there's a lot of burn right now, and also Arcanists have this, often have this problem where like, you need to play them, pray that they stick, and then untap with them. Um, or, sorry, start your next turn with them, the non-magic players, uh, and go from there. Against certain decks, this kind of helps protect your Al your Albeast for a turn when it's got low health, or protect a Mana Forger for a turn. It's not super reliable, but it, it, it is pretty good. And I think it also... Like, if you watched my Abyssian video, um, you might have seen uh, my, my Abyssian Mirror, or not Mirror, but playing against Poncho Mango, um, playing Burn Abyss, and he was, uh, you know, running quite a lot of spells that dealt damage to my face. So playing Prophet of the White Palm was actually a big tempo swing. Um, we have Chromatic Cold, um, just a superb removal spell, always good. Dispelling and dealing 2 damage allows you to kill most small creatures either outright or with a general hit. Um, and it can also go face for a bit burn. Also Prison, I talked about earlier, I think this card is very well positioned in 2-draw. Uh, and it, a lot of people are playing you know, big things like Iron Cliffs and stuff and it just you know, resets them. Yeah, they can play it again next turn, but you can play other stuff in the meantime as well. And get a tempo lead. Um, 
Hearth Sister, another good support card for Arcanists. This is really good for being able to put Albi Sage or whatever in a safe spot and then swap it in when you need to actually hit somebody. Um, or you can swap an opponent's backline unit next to your big Arcanists to trade with them and kill them. Uh, Mana Forger, uh, this card looks a bit underwhelming as a 1 2, but um, I at some point realized when seeing other people play it that unlike the old Mana Forger in Duelist 1, uh, this one discounts all your spells. I think I think it did that at launch in Duelist 1, but was nerfed very quickly, or but nerfed before launch. But obviously, we've reverted to a long ago patch. So, an, an active Mana Forger, even playing it on the same turn, you know, you can play it and if you're playing two spells, or well, you paid for it. And if you're playing three spells, it can give you some advantage there. Uh, Mark of Solitude, it's kind of a nice card. We have a lot of small creatures, uh, and this turns them into less small creatures. We don't have any ranged units, which is something worth considering, but I think Mark of Solitude is quite a nice tempo card uh, to make use of, you know, little Mana Forges and Prophets of the Black Palm. A uh, single Alchemist Lawmaster, this is just like, this card is fine. It fills your curve and you can use it to do clever tricks. Um, it gives you, it's kind of like a tutor, like as long as you need to draw a second copy of the same card. Um, because you can choose when you play it, you can make sure, okay, well, I've, my last spell was X, that's the one I need, now I'm going to play this, or save a certain spell until you can Lawmaster it. It also gets your opponent's spells, so if they play a big removal spell, you can nick it and move their stuff right back. Prismatic Illusionist, this card is terrible, but um, it is good if you get to go off with Albi Sage, and it is one of the ways of making a reasonable amount of threatening board in Arcanists. Um, it's actually been nerfed since the olden days, because it's now a 3-2 instead of a 2-3, so it dies to a general hit. It makes it even less protectable. Um, and things like Tempest are very popular. But, on the other hand, um, it being 3 attack does help if it has been buffed up by Alvi Sage, which is generally the only situation where you want to try and play it. Um, Sunseer, this card on the other hand is very good right now. Um, so whenever this engages in combat, basically, you get to heal your general. This is really good with Mark of Solitude um, and other attack buffs. Not, I, I think Mark of Solitude is the only one we have, but worth noting. Um, that can really swing a game. Aspect of the Worm, um, I'm just trying this. This card is kind of cool, like, it's another way of repositioning your Arcanist. So you can turn a random spare Prophet of the White Palm into a 4-4 four, four Flyer and give another Arcanist flying. You can use it as removal in a pinch, right? If you've got an Albi Sage and they've got a big minion, you can play this on the minion and then Albi Sage can kill it. Speaking of Albi Sage, this is by far the most important card in this deck and most Arcanist decks. Um, even when they printed all the busted ones in uh, Ancient Bonds, Albi Sage was still the big engine that made everything work. Um, this card gives you the ability to snowball a massive board um, and if it is unanswered it's very hard to come back from you know Albi Sage plus friends beating you down even if they don't have much attack uh, your ability to make constant trades is remarkable finally I am experimenting with Spirit of the Wild um, I noticed it costs 4 I was like well that's pretty good isn't it um, there are probably some cool things you can do where you play Prismatic Illusionist make 3 creatures and then activate them um Maybe a bit cute, but again, it's also a way of like increasing the ability of your creatures to trade by, you know, if you've got an Albi Sage, it gives them all extra health to attack with. Um, in my test game earlier, it was pretty good allowing me to like gain four more life against Burn with my Sunseers. Um, so it does some nice things. I don't think this deck is good. Uh, in fact, I think it's actively weak. I'm not really sure how to fix that. Like, a lot, there's running a lot of quite weak cards, but there aren't really good alternatives. Like, could play a generic 3-drop instead of Illusionist, to be fair. Or maybe Lawmaster. Um, I could cut the fancy cards and maybe just put in some random 6-drops. Could trim down on Profits of the White Palm for something more expensive. Maybe that's a good idea, actually. The new Razorback permanently buffs creatures, so this might also be good as a way of making your um, Arcanists less useless. In fact, yeah, let's do that. I'm going to put in a Razorback. Maybe I'll cut this. Let's do this. We put two Razorbacks in. This gives us slightly raises the curve and gives us a bit more ability to increase the attack power of our toughness buff minions. It's also very good with Sunseer. Um, like Sunseer going from having when this attacks you gain two to actual lifesteal which works on counter attacks as well. Huge, huge, huge buff. Um, and I actually played the card quite a lot. I think it's very strong. This hand is dreadful. 
think I just ship everything. This is really bad early on. Uh, this does nothing when we have, don't have a board. And polarity is a finisher. Maybe we should only have one polarity, actually. This is kind of cute. I can flash freeze and then Alcoin Lawmaster. So I don't lose the card and it prevents them from taking a mana tile. Never mind. Um, well, now they've got a full hand, bouncing the next turn play is going to be sick. So let's get rid of this. Do I just play the Lawmaster? I can't Prison plus Lawmaster next turn because I'd have to play the Lawmaster first. So I think that's the case. I think I'll just... I could go here and threaten this tile, but I think I'd rather put myself in the center and position my Alcuin, let's say, here. And it can at least trade. Or maybe here is better. My opponent still can't reach it and it's slightly closer to the action. Oh, Solitude's nice. So we can we can get a tempo hit off that. So we're kind of expecting, like, you know, move forward, Silver Guard Knight sort of thing here. I will bounce literally anything they play. Oh, I could just, actually, to be fair, I might just attack that. <laughs> I think I'll just attack that. Um, hell yeah, let's go. We're doing it. Big place. Okay, so I can come here, play the Sunseer on this model tile, um, or I can go here, swap the Void Hunter on. No, that's bad. Come here, take this tile. Can I deny my opponent all mana tiles? I think so. Oh, they can still take that one if I come down here and overcommit to it. Um, I mean, if they play a five drop, I kind of almost want them. I want them to play Iron Cliff Guardian because I just bounce it and it gets fizzled. Yeah, I, I think I actively want them to play an Iron Cliff Guardian. Right, I play this. Question is, do I mark of solitude it now? I think the answer is yes. I think I'd rather have the tempo. Um, like I can't attack them, so I guess if they hit it, it doesn't attack back. I think. Oh no, I can attack back. Yeah. Okay, we're good. Um, never mind. Cool. So if they if they play anything small, I just kill it with Sunseer, um, and heal back to full. And if they play anything big, I bounce it. Yeah, come on, show me your Ironcliff. Dancing Blades, alright. That's pretty good. I mean, I'll still I'll still bounce it, because it dissipates. This is rough, though. Like, I'm lacking in anything to really do to build a board. Okay, never mind. We're fine, we're fine. Um... This positioning is super awkward, though. No, it doesn't matter. I have a heart sister. It's probably actively good for me to put my thing miles away. We bounce that. We get a trigger. Um, that goes away. I'll attack them. Sun. Let's go. So if they do that again. Second L beast aspect of the fox. And they're looking kind of dead. Even if they sunbloom, like, if I replace them to a spell, or they give me something to, yeah. Like, I've got another L beast, so I can start buffing them again. The bodies are still relevant. Okay. You can do that. It's fine. <laughs> it is a bit awkward. I need another spell that I can actually, like, do something with. Damn. Maybe I should replace the Hearth Sister. It's a bit early to be thinking to swap this in. Um, I don't just want to play this and pass. I guess I could Hearth Sister and cancel the swap. Man. I was like on top of the world a second ago and now this is terrible. Um, this is too important. Like, if they holy immolation me, I need to not be too badly put out, right? 
I think I do just play one of these and cancel it. Oh, oh, and skip it, I mean. There we go. Okay, I mean, this is kind of good. The Razorback's pretty big. Um, I have a transmute for Lion Cliff. There's the other Tempest. I thought there might be another Tempest. Oh, that's the thought. Yeah, I shouldn't have played this. I expected a Tempest from the fact that they um, played the last one just to kill a 3 1. Um, well, this continues to look bad, doesn't it? Okay, I'm fine with them spending a card to deny me 2 HP. Still have full hand, though. You're bad. Uh, right, which of these actually do anything? Kind of none of them. It's nice to have a spell. Um, okay, that's... Oh, it's not even that good. <laughs> um, God. I think I have to do it, because I have literally nothing better to do. Do I just commit this for an extra body? Probably. They're on 10 life. It seems pretty good to do so, right? I think I'll attack them. Because we're like quite close to lethal. The aspect of the worm on this, um, that's 10 damage total. And they can't run away from it. Like, they can't run away from this very easily. We can body block, I guess. Um, I can also transform, like, if they play something next to... Like, if they play something over here, like an Iron Cliff, I can aspect of the worm and then fly this in. Cause... Okay. Don't really care about that. Because I have this. Looks like we're fine. If that's an immolation, that doesn't do anything. A weird decision. Um, cool. Okay, so we kill them with Aspect of the Worm, Aspect of the Fox. Alright. Okay, that was extremely sketch. We got there in the end. Extremely sketch. Oh, I've unlocked some mana cards. I mean, this is quite useful, right? By the time the game actually comes out, hopefully from playing the network test, I'll have upgraded my account to the point where I have a bit of gold and have unlocked some... <laughs> like, I've gone through the early levels of XP that you need to unlock the, the real game. Okay, this is a great going second hand, but a terrible going first hand. I guess Prison is slightly better, because they... Like, Silver Guard Knight is really good on turn two, right? I could hard mull for a two-drop. No, I think I need something to do. Okay, okay. I will replace the second thingy. This looks really bad against a lot of stuff. Saber Spine Tiger and thing. Maybe I should have played it further away. That said, the payoff is big, because I can play Albi Sage and bounce their thing. Get up to four toughness. And if they just if they just move here and tempest me, that's kinda of fine. I mean I don't have anything to do, but it's still fine. Magnetize! They they listen to my advice. <laughs> oh, that's pretty big, huh? I guess I bounced this for tempo's sake. Two drop? Sunset. I have five mana next turn, but I can punish an iron cliff just fine, so. <laughs> okay, <laughs> we're gonna bounce an Ironcliff Guardian for three turns. Let's go. I guess I can't actually punish it that well because I don't have another creature to play at the same time. Um, we need like Aspect of the Fox or something so I can play an Albi Sage on the Mana Tile or a Mana Tile and then remove the Ironcliff. They do only have three cards. It's not so bad. Like they did spend two cards on turn one. And this is not 
particularly relevant yet. It looks a bit awkward if they have a one drop. From... Oh, wow, okay. So I'm not expecting that. Right, do it. No Iron Cliff? Did they misclick? That was weird. I hope they didn't just like horribly misclick or something. Let's see how this goes. We've played around Sunbloom. This is a good draw as well. We're up to a full hand. Wow, what could they not spend 5 mana on? Do they just have a bunch of reactive cards that weren't worth committing for a Sunseer? Or is their hand like really heavy stuff? I feel bad, like they must have misclicked. Yeah, okay, I guess if they had an Arclight Sentinel, it wouldn't have been worth. We've got stuff to do now, huh? Um, they're on a full hand again, so we can bounce the Sentinel freely. I can kill this with Chromatic Cold as well. Um, I think Illusionist is the better line, though. Like, anytime we can safely get an Illusionist going, it's pretty strong. So, um, I'm not too worried about Tempest or Immolation anymore, I think. If I hit, I should replace something, because if I hit, um, Flash Freeze, it's disgusting. Solitude. It's not totally awful. Um, I'm a bit, well, actually, maybe I shouldn't, I shouldn't Hailstone Prison this. I should just Chromatic Hold and attack it, and attack the Healing Mystic. Um, I can position over Holy Emulation as well. At least to an extent. Like, this dies pretty easily here, but it's not the worst thing ever. Yeah, and we just attack this, attack this, CC. And this way I've still got Ironcliff Guardian answers. Oh, <laughs> that's what we needed. <laughs> the flash phase would have been so big. So a Tempest kills this, um, but still leaves this on four. They can Immolation and attack Albeast. Like they can sort of move here, put a two drop there. MO attack. Or kill these. Obviously you kill the Albeast instead of these, I think. This card is not very threatening without Albeast. In fact, it's barely threatening with it. Like, this doesn't look like much. Um, it's only the fact that they are super behind uh, that makes it hard for them to deal with. This card feels so busted in 2-draw. Like, I realized my opponent missed a turn. But even if they hadn't, I would have just bounced whatever they played. Um, like, if they go for the Iron Cliff, it just ends up back in their hand when I have an Albi Sage in play. Like, I don't know. Actually, no, to be fair, if they had played an Iron Cliff, they'd have been able to deny me one of the tiles. So I would have needed something else to do. My hand was quite bad. Right, there's the ammo. But they left the Albi alive. I can bounce this. I can also freeze it and ignore it. I don't really want to ignore it, though. The second Owl Beast looks really good here, but I'm a bit afraid of Sunbloom on the two of them. Um, maybe the Sun Seer is better. Let's replace this. Double Flash Freeze. Double Flash Freeze. Not bad. Double Flash Freeze is interesting, because if they do play an Iron Cliff, I can... Just stun it. Maybe it's better to just leave them with nothing in play. I can... Yeah, because if I bounce this, I can play... I'll be Sage in a safe spot, I think. No, I can do that anyway by moving this one up. And then playing another one here. Um, moving on inner to this tile. Hmm. I can go to 15, right? It's probably better to preserve this.
Oh, I know what I should do. I can leave a gap. Um, but I can position like this, which also plays around Holy Immolation. I should have attacked the whoops. I was running out of time. Forge is pretty cute. Third, I'll be Sage. That is a hard commit. This one being kind of out of position doesn't really matter because I have Half Sister in the deck and the um, Aspect of the Worm and Spirit of the Wild. So there's a few cards I can draw that can help me reposition and get next to them. I kind of want to, since they haven't answered this, I kind of want to look for a polarity here. But they're still. There must be like martyrdoms in their deck, right? Everyone's playing martyrdom right now. It's so good. They got a shroud. They can kill that for free. Well, not free. They committed a shroud, but they can kill it. Um, they're still on twenty. It's quite a high life total. They're still on twenty-two. It's quite a high life total. Kind of need the sun here now. Um, bouncing any of this stuff's pretty bad. Let's replace the mana forger because my. Um, Interesting. Um, let's see. I should protect myself. I'm gonna attack this. Play this Sunseer. Play this other Owl Beast. Out of Immolation range. Stun this. Everything is huge. You'll go. So, I mean, Martyrdom is annoying, Dispel is annoying. I Now I've played all my Elbeasts, so I'm kind of at risk of like... Well, if they can remove these two Elbeasts, I have no more Elbeasts, and therefore my deck is rubbish. So I really need to find a way to kill them pretty soon, because I am... Despite the fact that I've had so much opportunity to gain tempo this game, um, which I've been able to make use of to an extent, I think I'm losing. I know it looks good right now, but like... They're still on 20, lots of cards. If I draw Polarity... They die, but like, I haven't drawn polarity yet, so we'll see how this goes. I mean, there must be some huge creatures in their hand, right? Let's see something. I don't know if they're just trying to sandbag player on removal or what was really weird and reactive. Um, and they missed that turn two, but I don't know. Bit difficult to tell what's going on. Running away is fine. What we got? Arc Light Regalia. Makes sense. And that's it. Okay. Um. So 10 damage with the mass flight. That does nothing. I think I just do this, right? I can take the Regalia off or kill their stuff. It's a bit of an awkward dichotomy. Um, actually, I can't give everything flying at once because they need to then move. Um, hmm. So I can attack this, attack this, do this anyway, hit them to knock the Regalia down to charge. I don't know, it all looks really bad. <laughs> I think that's probably the line. So we hit this, hit this. Um. Play this. Play this. This has flying. Come over here. Attack them down. I've, I mean, everything's on the table. I've committed it all. Fully scraping for stuff to do right now. Like, if, if we hit a polarity, like, if one of these remains alive and undispelled, 
I haven't drawn a martyrdom yet. They're really, like, really struggling to figure out what they're doing. Like, they have they have all the normal, or seem to have the normal sort of Temple Lion or Ash esque cards, right? They've got we've seen like th we've seen most of the Healing Mystics. We've seen the Shroud. We've seen two Arcoid Sentinels, Galia, Temp first. No, that was the last game. Um, is that it? I feel like that's it. That's all they've shown us. Those are cheap cards. I'm really baffled as to why they're playing so few of them. Are they just being really patient? Are they just like, I can beat this person. They don't, <laughs> they don't have anything going on. Dancing Blades, yeah. Tempest? Martyrdom. Wait, this is still alive. Bold. Oh my lord. Okay. Uh, right, so we can... Oh, I can bounce that. For free. Uh, we are definitely needing to attack some generals right here. Um, this, I guess, just cashes in. What do I replace? Probably going to keep this, right? Chromatical, that's pretty good. I guess we bounce this. It disappears. We... I can chromatic them and then attack them with this and the Arclight Regalia goes away. That seems okay. Right, because the... The protection is gone now. So I can attack them with this. It goes away. I think I hit them with the Albeast. I, yeah, I need to kill them somehow, right? Um, and then I think we just surround them. And go face. Attack with this. Play this. Bring up the general. So they can't Tempest, they can't Holy Emo. Uh, they can't do a lot of things. Now you show up. <laughs> this hand is awful. Look at all these cards that do nothing. I wonder if they're going to go for the emulation and not realize. Well, they have another Dancing Blades. Damn. Okay. Right, we have no more Albi Sages, but we have a Flyer and a 210. And I have a Heart Sister for whatever this is. Wait, what? That's an interesting line, huh? Um, right, we win, right? We just bounce this out of the way and then attack with everything. Um, or, yeah. Oh my god. Well, we're 2-0, but it doesn't feel like 2-0. I just feel like I was losing the entire time and then scraped it together. This deck feels like it's very hard to play for no payoff, you know what I mean? Like, we won that game, but my opponent also floated, like, 10 or 15 mana over the course of the game. Um, didn't draw... Drew only one martyrdom, and only drew it really late. Um, struggled to answer my board. Uh, like, and we still only barely won, like... If the game had gone on for another turn, we'd probably just lose. Or if they were on a bit higher life total, we'd just lose. Um, but we did win. We did get there. So it can, we are technically 2-0. It can happen. Um, yeah, don't think I'd recommend that deck. But if anyone has ideas for improving it, I'm all ears. Because, I don't know, it feels like it should work. Like, I'll be Sage Frost uh, Flash Freeze is good. That's a good pair of cards to be playing. But, like, I don't know. Aspect of the Fox feels really bad in a deck that doesn't have a lot of reload. And there aren't any real way... Like, maybe I should be playing Void Hunter or something to draw cards. There isn't really anything. I, I did check. Um, in Vanar, there's Cryogenesis, which draws Vespers, which is a separate engine. This obviously is worse now. Dying Wish, draw two cards, is like, maybe okay. And then you can draw an Artifact, which does nothing. Or this, which... Also, like, we're... Well, I mean... If this was an Arcanist itself, I'd probably play it. 
and try and like jam some cold biters or something to get the artifact part going. Maybe that's how you're supposed to do it. Draws three, which is a ton. Maybe that is how you do it. What artifacts exist in Vanar? Uh, when this is destroyed, give your general this takes no damage until you. That's kind of good. It's kind of alright. Trades with two drops. This is, you know, some AoE. This is probably too expensive, but. It doesn't look completely awful, right? It does make your, your actual Arcanists less consistent, but like. The deck's already inconsistent. How long is this video? 35 minutes. You know what? Maybe I'll make some tweaks and come back in a separate uh, separate episode. I think I need some dinner. Thank you all for watching. But uh, yeah, maybe, maybe we'll, I'll come back for a part two uh, and see how we fare with Songweaver Engine. Have a good one, everybody. See you later.